Batmobile. Let's go. Hello again, everyone. Yes, it's me, Matt. I hope you are having a fantastic day, and we're going to learn about a special new tank. And when I mean new tank, I genuinely mean a completely new main battle tank, which is, to be fair, quite unheard of in modern-day uh, military procurement. We always look at tanks. They seem to be upgraded as they go, given new modification packages, new systems, etc., etc., and the features change, but the core structure of the tank is pretty much the same. But today, we're talking about, of course, many of you have probably already seen, heard, and seen a thousand other channels talking about it, the KF-51. And the reason I put that little blurb at the beginning there with the Batmobile is because it's always fascinating uh, how instantaneous reactions to new equipment comes out. I mean, it's literally, I got a notification that the article had come out from Ryan Metal that this tank was being released and not... Two seconds later, almost 20 channels had released videos um, of this tank. And of course, you know, I'm going to definitely get on that bandwagon because this is pretty exciting news. And normally I get excited for things like this anyway. But when I mentioned before about this being new, it, it really is a completely new main battle tank, which is the most fascinating part about this. Now, this totally blindsided me. I had absolutely no idea this was coming into fruition, that this was something that uh, Rheinmetall was producing. Of course, I'm a massive fan of Rheinmetall's products, including that of the Lynx Infantry Fighter Vehicle, which is uh, a vid video that I did in the past, which, you know, I really like the way that they produce their vehicles and the technology that they put into their vehicles and how seriously they take design and features of a main battle tank. It it's fascinating to me how much effort they put into uh, cross-referencing and research, etc., to make the finest military equipment in the world. So the Panther KF-51, a, a quite fitting name for a main battle tank, you know, uh, tend to sort of hide in the uh, in the wood line there and then pounce on you when you least expect it. And that's exactly where this tank's really going with it. Why do you think that way, Matt? Why do you think it's compared to a Panther? Well, Panthers are not seen very well, for the most part. They'll pounce on you from behind. Uh, or from, you know, a long way away that you have no idea that they're coming and all of a sudden they'll creep up on you and just take you out. And this is kind of what this tank is doing. It's a bigger beast. It's faster than some of the other main battle tanks out there today. And one of the biggest features that I'm totally blown away by, literally, is that 130 millimeter gun. Yes, a bigger bore beyond the smoothbore 120 millimeter that is really pushing a punch for the main battle tanks today. It's the next generation of armament on tanks you know a lot of people say well the 130 millimeter is overkill you know the 120 does the job you have to realize that uh, unfortunately it's not quite the case the 120 millimeter projectile is obviously definitely a today's generation projectile in terms of ballistics it's doing everything it needs to do it's knocking probably majority of modern tank armor out even at distance uh, with uh, armored piercing fins stabilized discarding sabo you want to add that up with some potential depleted uranium, you're going to have something that's going to punch through just about most tank armor of today. However, that is of today. Militaries around the world are developing more advanced main battle tank armor and technology that is starting to put a little bit more of a challenge onto the 120mm smoothbore. This is, in some regard, for today's combat environment, overkill. But I think this tank is really proposed for the market that is looking for the next 20 to 30 years. And we're seeing, as I mentioned before, a lot of main battle tank uh, developers and designers and manufacturers adding packages onto something that's already tried and tested and works very well. Abrams, Leopard, Challenger 3, etc, etc. But when you come for a new program like this, you're given sort of a start from scratch capability. And that's really where Ryan Metal has gone with this is a radically, totally new concept um, with technology that's really been embedded into the tank, not upgraded it, it's fully digitized it's taking everything that's really cool out there whether it be active protection systems drones auto loaders which i know a lot of you are like matt you hate auto loaders <sighs> i have to say in this scenario it makes sense 130 millimeters the extra 10 millimeters from the 120 you'd think oh, it's not a big deal when you look at a 130 millimeter projectile it, it, it's beefy guys it's it's a beast uh, and to be a loader, manually loading that over and over again, it's going to be a challenge. But I don't think a big challenge, but something to consider. 
But in the grand scheme of things, you know, I think most militaries are starting to step this way. Automated systems um, that can actually put rounds into the breach quickly and effectively with less crew members required. And I know I've talked about having, you know, the fourth member allows for gun, uh, sorry, track maintenance and vehicle maintenance, which it does. But this vehicle may have, you know, mechanical properties or engineering properties that reduce the amount of wear and tear on the vehicles to reduce maintenance overall. That being said, track maintenance, you just can't get around that, folks. You, <laughs> tracks are inherently a pain in the butt to fix. Um, I've done it a lot in my previous military career, and they take a lot of people to do. So, you know, this tank isn't game-changing in the realm of, you know, running gear and suspension and all that sort of stuff. So it's not really going to sort of drastically improve that side of things. But as I said, armament and technology is really where this tank is going to excel. So the Panther KF-51, as you can see on the Rheinmetall webpage, that's where we are today. Future technology. The Panther is the first of its kind, uh, drawing on the latest technologies, highest lethality on the battlefield, combined with integrated survivability, fully digitized NGVA data backbone, uh, next generation operational capabilities. This is very executive level sort of punch words, really, isn't it? Uh, this enables a reduction in crew size, right? So there you go. They are removing the fourth crew member. But I do believe that they have the opportunity and the ability to put the fourth crew member back into this tank. Um, that's an interesting feature because if necessary, you could have a secondary commander. Um, maybe, and I'm not sure, there's not a huge amount of information on this tank yet. Maybe it can be manually loaded if the autoloader failed. Hard to say. Um, highly lethal, right? That 130mm future gun system and optimized sensor to shooter links. Interesting to see what that's going to be all about. Um, not too sure. Again, not a huge amount of information on this so far. Highly protective. The first main battle tank adopting an integrated... This is the important word here. Integrated survivability concept. Not modified or upgraded. Integrated. This tank has been designed to have that feature fully in-depth into its technology, which is really cool. Um... And a concept of on and off platform sensors coupled with active, reactive, and passive protection and a dedicated top attack protection system. This thing looks like something off of a, a sci-fi comic. It looks, I have to say, looking at the conceptual art that I've looked in the past, it looks exactly like, you know, those people who go on deviant art and start drawing out tanks. It looks, I have to say, in terms of its looks, it looks absolutely gorgeous. It's probably the most beautiful tank i've ever seen um in every aspect of its design it's slanted armor the barrel shroud which and a lot of people hate the barrel shroud um it has a massive citv or commander's independent thermal view or i'm sure it has other integrated optics in there too but it's beefy like look how tall that is so in terms of its height profile it is it's a little taller than what you would expect from some other tanks um i love the camo scheme but that's just paint i mean that can be put anywhere to me it screams leopard 2 with a bigger gun and some upgrades, but it, it's not that, right? Um, fully digitized. We're in the digital age, right? Getting away from the old school analog stuff. It's the first for an MBT. The Panther is designed around the digital architecture complying with NGVA standard. This is the key enabler for future decision support and automated systems. So NGVA is a basically NATO standard uh, system for communications and digital battlefield technology. So radios, uh, maps, uh, tactical battle plans, all that stuff links to one another, right? Communications, it's all standardized across NATO. Um, I know there's a lot of different systems involved in that, which we're not going to talk about today. But what that means is, is that when things are digitized, they're harder to, to, to gather information from, right? It's encrypted information. Uh, communications is a lot easier to work with. I know previously when I worked in Afghanistan, having the Warriors, uh, we had all our, our radios cryptoed. The enemy at the time, obviously the tower, and don't have access to systems that can hack into crypto. But we all know of the nations that can. And crypto protects only to a certain level. Eventually, there is potential for it to be hacked. It's extremely difficult. But the next generation of sort of uh, standardized communication and digital hardware and software is obviously being implemented into this tank wholeheartedly. So really, really exciting stuff. In terms of its lethality, right? So this is a big big step away from what's currently going on in the world today with tanks right so dominate and destroy i love their words that it's designed to dominate and destroy well i can safely say it's certainly dominating in the in the realm of firepower 
Um, the future gun system consists of the 130mm cannon, a fully automated ammunition handling system, and additional armament options include the Hero 120 loitering ammunition. I did a video on this recently, actually, but it was an infantry uh, launched drone. The Hero 120 or the Hero drone package is basically loitering ammunition, which you can shoot the drone up into the sky, it flies around with the camera, you inside the tank or somewhere else in the command center is able to use this system, fly it around, find your targets, and then turn it into basically somewhat of a javelin. It just kamikazes into the target. I've said this a hundred times in other channels and other videos. I've said it's probably just as much. This technology was going to be fully implemented into a tank eventually. It's not a box they strap onto the side or, you know, a testing system. This tank is clearly fully integrating and developing around this drone. They want this tank to have its own eyes and ears in the sky and a long range system that can knock out tanks at distance with a very accurate uh, and tactical drone, right? So it gives tons of information before it gets there and when it does, it can knock something out. Potentially a main battle tank it's going against. Very, very exciting. If you notice in this diagram, you can see it right here. Four of them. It has four Hero 120s providing no line of sight strike capability and modular mission options. So... You could probably mod modify this to have different types of hero systems in there or different types of loitering munitions, maybe a bigger caliber, bigger threshold of explosion, uh, or just surveillance drones, right? You want to pack this maybe with smaller ones that you can just pump 20 of them out and fly all over the place. Very, very exciting stuff. Very exciting stuff. Uh, rarely has the sheer firepower been more impressive. <laughs> it's clearly a sales thing here. Um, the future gun system developed by Ryan Metal enables a 50% longer kill range achieved than the 120. 50%! <laughs> it's doubling the kill range of a standard 120mm smoothbore. That is, that's huge, folks. That is absolutely massive. When you think about that, it's not all the pros. There's not always the pros when it comes to something like this. Yes, you get a 50% longer kill range. You also have a larger ammo rack. You also have a more difficult ammunition to come by because logistically most of NATO nations are still using the 120 millimeter round. You would have to upgrade all of your systems, all your supply trucks, all the logistic infrastructure to feed this tank. But the, the great thing with this is this may send the benchmark for other vehicles and other nations around the world to say, you know what, maybe it's time for us to do the same thing, which is why I think this tank could export very well in the future and i say future probably 10 20 30 years because ryan natal clearly has a lot of contracts going on at the moment and they've done a lot of good things in the past you know working with leopards challenger 2 etc and uh this is this is no different i think it's going to appeal to a lot of european nations for sure uh clearly with the context of the modern situations we're in today it does have a 12.7 millimeter coax machine gun pretty standard nothing special there multiple remote controlled weapon systems so it does have rcws which is at the back here you can see that so it has drone defense proximity protection has a 7.62 millimeter rmg lots of ammunition tons of 360 coverage 85 degrees minus uh i think that's a typo it should be minus 15 degrees plus oh 285 sorry i thought it was a minus so minus 15 depression to 85 degrees elevation so that's basically able to take out those small drones. So if you could see loitering ammunition from the enemy coming towards you, you have a system that could, in essence, be somewhat of a sky defense, right? Knocking out small drones, small reconnaissance vehicles, or the dreaded infantry, which I find it fascinating that they put it at the back of the turret. It makes the most sense, right? You don't want to be getting in the way of your uh, your SEOSS, or the commander's site, otherwise known as CITV on the, the Abrams. Um yeah, really fascinating that they've put that on the back there. But once again, integrated. It's part of the tank. It's not an upgrade module. It's not something they've just slapped on there and bought from a third-party supplier. This is something that they have developed for the tank specifically. All weapons are connected with targeting sites and fire control computer through fully digitized architecture and the hunter-killer and killer-killer operation. Seamless target engagements with future AI decision support. This is interesting. I'm not too sure what that means, whether the tank somewhat learns its profile of which vehicles to go for or which targets to designate first not entirely sure but really really interesting in terms of firepower this thing is punching like punching it's got three separate weapon systems long range engagement 50 percent more than the standard 120 loitering munitions for long range reconnaissance and top-down attack and a potential rws system for infantry and air support it's, it's incredible 
Survivability, the Panther employs a groundbreaking, fully integrated, comprehensive, weight-optimized survivability concept. Holy cow, is that a blimmin' sentence to say. Doesn't really say much there, does it? In addition to classic measures, Panther's digital architecture enables an on-off-board survivability with active, reactive, passive protection systems. So the Panther is configured with pre-shot detection capability, namely strike first, threats from above are defeated by Rhyme Metal's top attack protection system. Interesting. We talked about the Rosie smoke protection system before, right? It's a sort of 360 degree reactive smoke system. Very, very interesting stuff. Very quick reload on those things too, unlike the old canister rounds that we use, uh, that I used to use in the British Army and some are still using today. Rosi is a very quick module. So that's what you want, you know, when you pop smoke, they're done, right? You want to be able to get a fresh pack on there quickly so that you can re-get it back into the battle. Um, digitized architecture again, survivability feature, active kinetic energy projecting, uh, protection system. So not sure how that's going to work. You know, connect, kinetic energy projectiles are obviously coming at extreme speed. So maybe there is something that they're using with the reactive system that can knock out those kind of things. Reactive and passive, so sensor-based reactor, so it's covered in sensors. It has passive protection, active protection against large caliber KE. That's really interesting. And against ATGM, which I think is that top-down attack protection. Uh, has the smoke system. Uh, that's that taps. Mine protection doesn't specify what. Probably a stronger belly plate, maybe. Uh, the drones themselves from inside. And pre-shot detection. So that's basically, uh, you know, if you're being lazed or the system's picking up some sort of infrared signature, it's going to obviously regulate where that's coming from. Mobility. So this is the other exciting thing about this vehicle, and that's why I liked, I like the fact they called it the Panther, because they're a cat, and they're fast, just like the Leopard. The combat weight is 59 tons. Leopard, the latest Leopard, right, is roughly 65 to 70 tons. That's a significant drop in weight, right? That is a speedy vehicle. It puts it in the battle weight, uh, battle winning weight category so i would agree you know you're losing a lot of weight there and that's going to provide you with better fuel consumption faster transition in the battlefield off, especially off off road and even you know as you can see in this diagram diagram picture um on road because <coughs> that's one of the biggest problems with main battle tanks is obviously traversing them from uh, off road to road so the ability for it to be a lot lighter i mean almost 10 tons lighter is giving a huge benefit and a reduction to the running gear uh, impact as well, which, of course, if you don't have a fourth crew member, it's going to save you some time. So it says here the concept, which I find is interesting. It's a truly software-defined tank. So this is like a big running computer. Let's be dead straight here. This thing is covered in technology. Um, I think we're really stepping into that modern age of tanks now. We, we really are. We, we see a lot of concepts, you know, four or five years ago. Now we're actually seeing things being produced. I never thought they'd make Challenger 3, but here we are. And now we're looking at this beautiful KF-51 Panther. I have to say, as of right now, this tank screams best tank in the world. I'm just saying, you know I don't like saying that very often. I don't really uh, appeal to the, oh, this is the greatest thing in the world kind of thing. But in this particular scenario from what i'm looking at and from what the features it has yeah it's it's probably up there um so the panther is designed for a crew of three supporting future force support structures uh two crew stations are located in the chassis one in dedicating the driver obviously uh and uh and an optional station dedicated to company a commander or a drone operator so that's why i said earlier in the video this doesn't have a loader but it does have the opportunity to have someone in there purely using that uh that hero system or the drones or even that rws on the back which is again different style of tank warfare you don't see that often right you don't have a fourth crew member playing with all the gadgets in the back that's normally like an ifv signed to set up but in this situation the tank has been given a fourth crew member not to load the gun but to play with all the other cool technology that's going to provide it with a lot more killing power like that drone the fully digitized ngva yes so very simple, you know, it allows it to communicate and work with different uh, different vehicles across NATO. Uh, each workstation can hand over tasks and roles. Okay, pretty simple. Uh, partnership, join the Panther Leap and help jointly shape the system by engaging Rhyme Metal's innovative... Uh, okay, so, yeah, cool. 
Uh, sustainability, completely new MBT being brought to life, one that is not limited by considerations. I, I like that. Not limited by considerations of current MBTs, right? They have totally blew out the water of 120 millimeter logistics and firepower. They've gone away from just slapping modules on vehicles that aren't really designed to host those kinds of pieces of equipment. For instance, when you start putting active protection systems around a tank, you're increasing the workload potentially of the vehicle. It's not designed to carry all that extra weight. I'm not saying active protection systems weigh a lot, but you start adding all this stuff up, like drones, RWS, active protection systems, added armor, a bigger gun, for a vehicle that wasn't designed to host all that weight, all that signature, or the profile, right? This tank has, from top to bottom, and this is why I'm so excited for this tank. It is just super game-changing. I know I've said that many times in the past on this channel, but... With the agenda that's going on in today's battlefield and, you know, the climate that we're in, uh, this is exciting stuff. You know, Rheinmetall do make fantastic products. They know exactly what they're doing. You know, the Leopard 2, great tank. You know, its latest version, the 2A7V, skip, it skips past many of the generations of tanks that are coming out, you know, within the last five, six years. And even Challenger 2, it's way behind the Leopard 2A7V. But for Western main battle tanks, of course, with the Abrams, uh, you know, SCP versions coming out, they're also putting new technology in their tanks. And it's really funny right now because there was a recent uh, announcement as well for the Abrams as well, which I'm going to be doing a video on shortly. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but it seems like there's just a big competitive streak for tanks right now. And I think things are being expedited for the fact that, of course, there is a tank on tank engagements going on as we speak to this day. And people are starting to realize uh, we might need to start thinking about what we're using. And as I said, that 50%, 50% extended range is is to me baffling. Like that is double the range of 120. That's that's really impressive. Um, I'm, I'd love to know its accuracy at that range and how the targeting systems and the, the ballistic computer works for that. You know, you as a gunner, you could potentially be engaging targets up to seven or eight kilometers if you think about it uh i mean i know some of the modern projectiles that come out now can can do that uh i did do a little bit more research and found that with this new projectile uh similar to the video i just did with the abrams new uh new uh 1158 i think m1158 ammunition programmable ammo right so you put your round in there you tell you what it want you want it to do and it'll do it whether it's wire guided rocket assisted i don't know but this is really, really cool. <laughs> it's so cool. Uh, so the KF-51 Panther. Let me know what you think about it. There is 100 channels and 100 videos being produced about this tank right now. It's big news in the tanking world, of course. But I'd love to hear your opinion on this. I know this is a little bit longer of a video than we're normally used to here. But I'm going to be doing definitely more videos on this in the future. Because it's just very, very, very exciting. Um, I appreciate you all stopping by. As I said, let me know what you think of the video in the description box below. If you could leave me a like, I would really appreciate that. And also leave me a comment. And you can go check out the description box below for all my other links, such as Facebook, Instagram. I do have my uh, PayPal and Patreon there. So thank you to everyone who's been supporting my PayPal and my Patreon. It really does mean a lot to me. And also those members of my channel. I really do appreciate you all as well. And if you just stop by, I appreciate you as well. Uh, but just coming by. And finally, if you do want to be notified of any upcoming videos in the future, please click the little bell by the subscribe button so you can be notified for next time. I hope to see you on the next video, folks. Take care. Bye-bye.